So there's been a lot of interesting news that's come out of football this week. Adam Lallana has confirmed his Liverpool exit. Pep Clotet will step down as Birmingham manager at the end of the season. League One and League Two clubs have voted in favour to end the season by an unweighted points per game system by an overwhelming majority, meaning Coventry City and Rotherham United are promoted to the Championship, Coventry as champions. Wickham Wanderers, Oxford United, Fleetwood Town and Portsmouth will battle it out through the playoffs. Sunderland are condemned to another season in League One. Tranmere, Southend and Bolton are relegated to League Two and Swindon, Crew, and Plymouth are promoted to League One and Charlton Athletic have new owners. I didn't think I'd have to come back and do another video like this so soon. It's been what, like nearly two months now and here I am back talking about the people at the top of Charlton because there's been some interesting changes it has to be said. So many people, how are we all doing? Welcome back to a new video. As you can tell by the title, and as I mentioned earlier, Charlton are under new ownership. Well, we kind of are. Being under the ownership of ESI for about four to five months and things have changed already at the top and this one... Well, see for yourself when I explain all of this. So the last time I left you with a video like this, I was speaking about, you know, Tanu Nima not giving the sufficient fund, not providing the sufficient funds to the EFL. And we were left basically in so much uncertainty that administration was still a threat. Since uploading that video, Tanu Nima and ESI have been trying to sell the club. They've been looking for a quick exit. They've been looking to sell the club on. Matt Southall, our former director, but he's technically still in ownership of the club because he has 35% stake in ESI. Uh, he was looking to sell his stake in the in the, uh, in the the business for a high six-figure number, which just shows all you need to know about him, really. Just try and take as much money out of the club as he physically can. Sue every person who says a bad word about him and take as much money out as he physically can. Nubbin! A lot of interested buyers and parties were coming out uh, coming out in the public eye, no less, and some in private as well, uh, speaking about their interest about the club, admitting that they are interested in buying the club. And last Monday, it was officially confirmed that we are under new ownership. We have been taken over by Manchester-based businessman Paul Elliot. Now, with this takeover, this does confirm the exit of Tanu Nima and Matt Southall. They are no longer associated with the club. They're no longer on ESI. Tanu Nima has sold ESI to Paul Elliot. He has sold the company or business or whatever you want to call it. Absolute parasite of a consortium, if you can even call it that. He has sold them to Paul Elliot. So, ESI is still in control of the club. Obviously, Southall and Nima going is a massive positive. It's a huge positive to get those two out of the club is a massive positive. They're both gone, no longer associated. They were literally, well, just the lies and just lying to the fans. They were trying to, said they'd give us stability and they gave us the exact opposite, put us literally in the ground even far down than De Chatelet ever did. And yeah, to be honest, seeing them gone, as I've said, massive positive, but, you know, it's just the fact that ESI, they're still here. I know they're under new ownership and I know that this Elliot Geezer could be a fresh start, but it's still ESI. And we know that everyone associated with ESI is just an absolute joke. They're all frauds, every single one of them, and we can't trust them. And as much as Paul Elliot wants to say, like, oh, I can bring, like, he can say all the right things. He can say everything he wants to say, but the reality is... The fans just can't trust him at this stage. He needs to earn that trust because, let's face it, I don't think anyone trusts CSI or anyone associated with that consortium, again, if you want to call them that. In the case of Elliot, he's fighting a losing battle because the fans don't trust him at this stage. Like, as much as he wants to say all the right things, as much as he wants to say, like, oh, I can bring the stability to the club, the reality is he's fighting a losing battle because the fans won't back him at first. And to be honest, I even said on Twitter myself, as soon as he came through the door, I want him gone because I'd, I want the I want everyone associated with ESI gone. I want them all out of this club and I want to be taken over by a new consortium, a complete new fresh start and we can kick on from there. But the fact that he's, Nima has sold, he sold this to Elliot just shows that like, I, I don't know what to think about it to be totally honest with you, but... There's a lot of interesting points we need to talk about this new takeover. So Elliot put up a statement on the club's website a few days ago and immediately from the off, again, like you'd normally expect from any sort of footballing owner, he was saying all of the right things. He's been saying that he has no long-term goal with the club. His main focus is to get through these next nine championship games, which of course restarts on June 20th this Saturday, which I'm absolutely buzzing for. But 
yeah, he said that his ambition now is not long-term. He doesn't have a long-term goal. He just wants to get through these nine games and then he will go from there. He's not made any sort of big promises. He's not made any sort of like big goals. As I say, he's focusing on now. It's what the fans want to hear, but we'd all expect it, to be totally honest. He does actually have a dig at Tanu Nima and Matt Southall as well. He said that I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to take money out of the club. I'm not going to benefit. I'm not going to buy this football club just to benefit from my own personal gain. I'm not going to take club money out and buy a Range Rover. I'm having a dig at Southall, essentially. Uh, and he says that I'm not like that. I want to put money in, which I already have done, um, which he claims that he has done. And he's going to basically, as he says, bring stability to the club. So again, as I say, he's saying all the right things, but Charlton fans have the right not to trust him because as much as owners have said in the past, like, oh, we've, we've, we, they say the right things. They're going to say, yeah, we're going to get to the Premier League in five years. I'm going to invest in the academy. I'm going to um, get our star men contracts. We're going to bring in some super deals and all this stuff. And it never really goes through. With Elliot, In Elliot's case, he's said, like, look, we're just going to focus on now and then we'll go from there. So, again, Elliot is saying all the right things. But we, we at this stage, we just can't trust him. And it's up to him to bring that trust to the fans because, as I say, the fans have the right not to trust Elliot. We've been lied to for years and years through such poor ownership that at this stage, whoever comes in, they need to live up to, they need to put their money where their mouth is and they need to live up to what they say and get these long-term goals and ambitions that they have done. In Elliot's case, he just wants to get through the championship games and whatever happens, happens, and he'll go from there. He also said that he's looking for a CEO and some extra investment. So he's looking, he's basically looking for, I guess you could say a business partner. He's looking to go into business with someone else. He's looking to bring someone in that's going to help him out, which again is, it's positive, but I am very, very skeptical about this whole thing. There is a lot of ambiguity and it raises a hell of a lot of question marks. First of all, who even is Paul Elliott? I don't think anyone has ever heard of him before now. Obviously, he's a Manchester-based businessman. Some people actually said that, oh, he might be the former Charlton player that used to play for us, but that's now obviously been confirmed. That's not the case. He has absolutely no footballing experience whatsoever. He said in the article, he said in the statement that he's tried to buy a football club in the past, but it never really went through. So he's glad that it's now gone through. So for the third time in a row, we've not had a owner we've had an owner that isn't footballing experienced other question marks to be raised as well like are the directors that Tanu Nima appointed i.e Claudio Florica and Marion Mahail are they still going to be on the board whilst Elliot is in charge does Elliot have the financial capability to give the 15 players that are out of contract obviously including loan players as well does he have the financial capability to give these players contracts will he have the capability to provide for the football club and if you read the statement it doesn't look good when he's saying, I'm looking for extra investment, I'm looking for a CEO. So it just shows that we've basically got another extremely skint investor at the helm of our football club. Because very clearly, Elliot does not have the financial capability to run this football club on his own. Which is just, it's, it's, it's annoying. It really is annoying at this point. And I just, I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. I can sit here and shout at a camera all I want, but... The fact is, Elliot don't have the money, does he? It's not good when you look at one individual that's taken over our club. As it stands, he's the only person besides Florica and Mihail, who I don't know if they're even on the board anymore. If they're not on the board, then Elliot and Tanu Nima's lawyer, Chris Farnell, who's another dodgy mother that is in charge of our club at the moment, he made this deal happen. So it doesn't exactly look very positive in that sense. Another interesting point that Elliot raises is that he claims that he's put money into the club. Now, obviously, there's been ongoing confusion and uncertainty about wages, about player wages, about staff wages, and how the staff are going to be paid. Now, last month, the staff and the players were paid. Many journalists like Jimmy Stone were quite confused as to where this money had come from. It turns out that Paul Elliott himself actually paid the wages. Now, this is actually one positive we can take from Elliott. This is one positive because... He's paying the club's wages. He's paying the staff. He said that he's going to do the same thing next month. He's going to pay the wages. So he's come in and sorted out the problems. He's come in and sorted out the problems that Tanu Nima has said he has. He's paying the club's wages. He's paying the wages of the staff and the players. And the biggest question mark I have to raise about this whole thing is that is Paul Elliott's takeover of the club actually temporary? 
So if you don't know what I'm referring to, basically on Monday, Tanu Nima, as he normally does, put a post up on Instagram stating that whoever came into the football club, the person that he was selling the club to, i.e. Paul Elliott and Chris Farnell, they would be part of a two-stage bigger plan. These owners would be coming in on a temporary basis to fix the current problems of the club to allow an actual proper takeover to go through, mainly because Neymar doesn't have the financial capability to run the club himself and he's too lazy to do it. So, yeah, he's got someone else to do his dirty work for him, i.e. his lawyer, Chris Farnell, who's extremely dodgy, who's then brought in Paul Elliott, who has no money to his name. Neymar says this is temporary, but by the sounds of this statement i'll leave a link to it in the description so you can have a read for yourself it sounds as if elliot's here for the long run for the foreseeable future and nima saying this is temporary some are uh, some rumors have been going around saying that the club if this is true if he is right here on a temporary basis then esi will be gone by next month and will be taken over by someone else if you look at this statement elliot is saying otherwise elliot is saying that he's going to be here for the long run albeit as he says, in the background, because obviously with the CEO and the extra investor that he wants to bring in, uh, that he's looking for, obviously the CEO will be the figurehead of the club, then the investor, the, the in extra investment that Elliot's asking for will then back the, will back the club properly, and he, as he puts it, he wants to sit in the background, so essentially Elliot is acting as a board member, even though he is now, I'm assuming, the majority shareholder of the business that runs the club. It's all dodgy. It's all dodgy. It's all confusing. The words that are, that are coming out of Elliot's mouth, which are a lot more positive than what De Chatelet and what Nima and Southall ever said. Again, as I say, there's a lot of scepticism about this whole thing. He clearly doesn't have the financial capability as an individual. We don't know whether Florica and Mihail, who are both idiots, we don't know whether they are still on the board. We don't know what Farnell's involvement is, and he is just as dodgy as the rest of them. I don't see Elliot as capable enough to take this club forward on his own, which is why very clearly that he's asking for this CEO and for this extra investment. But this is where it gets slightly more positive. So with Paul Elliot looking for extra investment, there have been, as I've mentioned earlier, a lot of interested parties, a lot of interested buyers that have been looking, that have shown a desire to buy Charlton. There have been five different buyers and consortiums that have confirmed their interest. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go through every interested party and buyer that has publicly confirmed their interest. There's five of them in total. I'm going to go through all of them and see how likely they are to go into business with Elliot. Now, obviously, at the start of the month, we did have the interest from Lawrence Bassini. However, I won't go into too much detail with this guy because he's actually no longer in the running with the club. I've explained all there is to know about him in the, in the previous ESI video I did. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I gave a little bit of a background check on Bassini. But if Bassini was to take over the club, it'd literally just be a nosedive straight into the grave if he came in. But thankfully, he has pulled out of the deal. He had a £1 million bid accepted for the club, I do believe. But decided to pull out of the negotiation and is currently in a legal battle to take over Bolton Wanderers, who I feel just so sorry for at this point. But Bassini is completely out of the picture when it comes to Cholton. The same can also be said for Massimo Salino. Now, most of you will probably know who he is from his time at Leeds United and how utterly controversial this guy is. I'd imagine this guy would be just as worse as Bassini. If you remember his time at Leeds, he went through six different managers there. He was known as like the manager killer. There's so much controversy, legal cases, like fraudulent cases, you name it. He's literally been under so much controversy. However, his present day ownership is slightly more positive than Leeds United's. He is currently the owner of Italian side Brescia. And when he took over the club, they were a second division side in Italy. They won the league last season, I do believe. Correct me if I'm wrong there. And... He's taken them from a Italian second division side to a stable mid-table Serie A side in their first season, which is it's impressive. It's very, very impressive. But his time at Leeds, his time previously in English football, is highly, highly controversial. And we... It's essentially, with Salino, if you go on like a six-game winless run, you're gone. And you're a manager, you're done. You're out the door. See you later. So 
Boya probably would have been long gone if Salino... If Salino was in charge during our 11-game winless run, Boya would be long gone by now. We probably would have been under our, I don't know, maybe our third or fourth different manager by now if Salino was in charge based on our current form. But yeah, Salino's gone in the dark since announcing his interest. This was about a month and a half ago, something like that. So I strongly doubt Salino will be coming into the picture or working alongside Elliot. Now, the other three that are interested in buying the club are a lot more positive compared to Bassini and Salino. But I'd have to say one of these three is probably less likely to buy the club and that is corporate football organization Portugal otherwise known as CFO Portugal a Portuguese consortium who about a couple weeks ago confirmed their interest to buy the football club their president Fernando Corte Real did a Q&A with Sky Sports and what he had to say is quite interesting, but again, there's a lot of scepticism to do with this Portuguese consortium. So, Corte Real claims to be inspired by the module put in place by Wolves, and obviously we all know the module that's put in place at Wolves and how largely successful that is. Not only did they piss the championship when this module came in, but they also a Europa League place in their first season back in the Premier League and look set to do that again, if not better, this season when the season restarts. And obviously, they brought in a ton of Portuguese players over the years, like Ruben Neves, João Martinho, Rui Patricio and a bunch of other players that have come through and have been unbelievably successful and not to mention their manager Nuno Santos who's led them to untold success and who knows what they could do in the future so obviously when they say things like that it does get you on the edge of your seat who know how successful Wolves is who says that Charlton can't do the same however CFO Portugal have admitted that if the club are to be relegated to League One that will have a factor in whether they want to pursue to buy the club or not. So obviously if we go down to League One, they'll probably have to readjust their plan. They probably have to think things a little bit more through, or they may even decide to pull out of the deal because they probably won't want to take over a League One club. Another thing, they don't seem to rate Lee Bowyer that much. They don't really seem to rate him that highly. It seems to me anyway, from what I can understand. I'll leave a link to the Q&A that they did with Sky News. Um, you can check that out for yourself. Well, they don't really seem to rate him that much. They say they're willing to work with him, but they also say, I guess, something along the lines of, like, oh, he may not be the man to push us forward. Like, we may have to consider other options in, in, in those kind of words. And the other thing is that they've also claimed that they have a five-year plan to get back to the Premier League. And as soon as I heard this, we've heard all this before, haven't we? De Chatelet said we're going to get to the Premier League in five years. Fast forward five years later, we're in League One in January, fighting for a playoff position under our 10th different manager in Lee Bowyer in that time. When ESI came in in November, they said they had a three-year plan to get to the Premium League, or the Premier League, however they like to call it. Fast forward five months, we are administration bound, fighting relegation again in the championship, looking set looking set for a League One return. So we've heard it all before, and when CFO come up with stuff like this, it's just like, mate, we've heard it all before. Put your money where your mouth is. Unless you invest like £25 million next season in the championship, then we'll start to believe you. But we've heard it all before, and it just makes Paul Elliott's like, ambition of let's just get the next nine games of the championship gone, and then we'll go from there, it's, is a lot more... I don't know I don't know how to say it. It's a lot more favoured by Charlton fans because we've heard this get to the Premier League in five years before that frankly we don't want to hear it again. Now I deem CFO to be unlikely to buy the club because I see it I mean when Elliot says oh we're looking for in an extra investment investor and a CEO, I strongly doubt that Fernando Corte Real will be looking to go into business with Elliot. I doubt that CFO and ESI will combine together and merge together. I'm not sure if that is likely. I think I either see it as a case of Fernando ditches CFO and Fernando brings in like this investor who, by the way, CFO are backed by like loads of different businesses across Portugal, like sports, I think property is one in there as well. There's loads of different businesses that are an investment in this corporate football organization, Portugal. So I don't know if Fernando is gonna to want to abandon this and bring in an investor from there and they can become the CEO and the extra investor, or he outbuys ESI and CFO outbuy ESI and they come in completely as their own separate identity, which obviously we would favour. I now deem with Elliot coming in, CFO is unlikely to buy the club, but you never know, you never know. But upon first impression, we've heard it all before with CFO with the claims that they're saying, but when they say like, oh, we're inspired by the Wolves module, it does get you off the edge of your seat a little bit because we all know how successful the module is at Wolves, but will it work at Charlton is the only question. I don't think that CFO are now likely to take over the club.
Now the other two I deem most likely to buy the club. I see them most likely to come in and work alongside Elliot. They'd be willing to do so and they are both 150% fan favourites. The first of which is the former Swansea City chairman, Hugh Jenkins. Now this guy has made his interest in the club quite public for about a month or so now. He's publicly confirmed his interest and most of you will know from his time at Swansea and how unbelievably successful he was in his time there. He took over Swansea in 2002 and sold them in 2017. In that 15 year period, he took the Swans from a League Two side to a mid-table stable Premier League side and even got them European football. However, after doing a little bit of research, I've seen that the Swansea fan base really don't like this guy. They really have a lot of bad things to say. And my interpretation is that the reason they don't like him is because he sold the club to their current owners, the Americans. The reason this falling out happened is because Jenkins disagreed with them over selling players. And Jenkins was like, I'm not working with this lot. Let me just leave. Now, that's actually a positive for Cholton because it shows that Jenkins doesn't take any of this selling players crap. Like, obviously over the years, Charlton have sold a ridiculous amount of our best players for money that has either disappeared and money that within a few years would be worth a lot more. Jenkins doesn't take any of that, which is of course very, very positive. And Jenkins, if he was to come into Charlton, based off his success with Swansea, I'd happily take him at Charlton because how you can take a League Two side to a Europa League spot in 15 years is astonishing. And who's to say that he can't do it again at Cholton? Now, from my understanding, Jenkins' personal net worth is not a lot. He doesn't have all too much. But there is another guy involved in this, and his name is John Van Sweden. I've definitely butchered that name, but he was one of the majority shareholders and one of the main money men when he was in control of Swansea. Um, and he actually posted a picture up on Twitter the other day saying um, of him outside the valleys. Discussions were well underway. And actually, Jenkins, I think a couple of weeks ago, had a £1.5 million bid accepted to buy the club. However, after that bid was accepted, he had a 48-hour deadline to uh, to buy the club and that deadline expired. And then he did a, another article. I'll try and find it and leave a link to it in the description. He said that... Uh, the takeover of the club is now up in the air. He's not all too sure whether it's going to work out. And he did say that I need time to plan it through. And obviously that's justified because Jenkins isn't an idiot. He's not a fool. He knows exactly what he's doing. His success at Swansea shows that this guy knows what he's doing. He's got vast amounts of footballing experience. He knows exactly what it, what it takes to run a football club and what it takes to run a successful football club. Yes, I obviously needed to allow him the time. And... Very clearly, by Nima selling to Elliot, it shows that they either didn't give Jenkins the time, enough time, or Jenkins pulled out of it. And frankly, it's likely that Jenkins now has pulled out, but we've not heard all too much from him. Now, whether Jenkins is willing to become Charlton CEO, merge with Elliot, and whether this Van Sweden guy wants to become this extra investment, but whether they want to do that or not is another question. And obviously he'd be willing to build a foundation and kick on forward, but I don't know whether he's going to want to go into business with Elliot, but only time will tell. But he is definitely a fan favourite and one of the leading runners to take over the club. Now, the current fan favourites, and in fact the favourites that are looking to buy the football club, has honestly been so positive. This is the most positive we've heard from Cholton in God knows how long. And if this guy is to come back to the club, it's unbelievable, frankly. The man in question is Peter Varney. Now, pretty much every Cholton fan knows who Peter Varney is. I personally didn't grow up watching Cholton when Varney was previously involved with the club. So for those of you who don't know who Peter Varney is, he was the former ex chief executive and former director of the club during our Premier League days. And obviously we know how successful those days were. And he was actually the executive vice chairman of the club between 2010 and 2011. So not only did he oversee the Premier League era, which was the best years of our modern day history, he also oversaw us winning the League one title and breaking the league one points record in 2011-12 he's been under some really successful times whilst running the club this guy knows what he's on about this guy is pure Cholton so this guy knows exactly what he's on about and when I first heard about this interest I was stunned I was absolutely stunned because this is the positive news that we need to have and as well as this Varney is not alone with this he is working with someone else by the name of 28 year old 
Andrew Barclay. Now, Barclay is the grandson of Sir David Barclay and the son of Aidan Barclay. He's made his own funds for investing in technology companies and real estate, and I'm not too sure, but apparently I've heard that his family also has a connection with the Ritz, like the hotel chain. I'm not all too sure with that. Let me know in the comments below if I'm right with that. This Barclay guy is minted, frankly. He's got the, he's got the money, and Varney obviously in this instance will be the CEO of the club. He'll be the main figurehead of the club and Barkley will be the investor. Now, Varney has joined Twitter. No, as a matter of fact, Varney and Barkley are both on Twitter and they've been speaking their opinion about this whole thing. Varney has been giving us the communication that we've needed for God knows how long. Obviously, Southall tried to do that on Twitter, but he was chatting utter bull****. As for Varney, he's been giving us communication. He's been telling us, right, me and Mr. Barkley have confirmed our interest. Here's an article that we've done. Here's interviews that we've done. I'm trying to sort this out. And he even said a few days ago when Elliot took over the club, he said that me and Andrew have been made aware of the new ownerships and discussions between the two are ongoing. So Bar Varney is not messing about. He is getting stuck in and he's looking to buy this club. And honestly, there is no bad words I can say about this because he's going in straight away. He's looking to get this done. He's looking to get it back involved with this club and steer us in the right direction. And Obviously, he's overseen the best years of the club's history in the two stints he's been here. And obviously, Barkley, who will back him with the money, it's all very positive. These guys are without a doubt the fan favourites. They are 100% the fan favourites. I can't say a bad word about them. I really can't. Previously with this, Varney has said that he's been struggling to communicate with VSI. He's been struggling to get through to them um, before Elliot came in. He was struggling to get on the phone to, I don't know, Mihail or Florica or Farnell. And uh, Mihail came out and said that They've been, he's been speaking to Farnell for two months and then Farnell came out and said, I've had no communication with Varney whatsoever. <laughs> That's just another example of how dodgy this Farnell geezer is and how dodgy this Mihail geezer is. It does get a little bit of positive, get a bit of negativity to it with this Barkley Varney deal because will Barkley and Varney want to work with Farnell? Will they want to work with Elliot? That's another question. Or will Barkley just sit there and say, look, I want to buy out ESI. We're going to take over the club on our own. And frankly, Barkley and Varney have been expressing their frustration about the EFL previously, Barkley especially. It shows that Barkley really does care. He really does care. And he knows exactly what he's getting himself into. Varney and Barkley both care, care for the club. And that is why they are the fan favourites. That's why every single Charlton fan right now wants these two to either take over the club or go into business with Elliot. And they are more than likely to do that. Discussions are ongoing now. If we go down to League One, will it be a contributing factor? Maybe. But Varney has worked with us in the past when we were in League One. I don't see why he wouldn't want to take us over if we are in League One. I think regardless of the division that we're in, Varney's going to want to take us over. I think that Varney will be looking to get this deal done and he'll be looking to get it over the line. And frankly, he is the person that we need to take this club forward. So frankly, that is all there is to say about this. We have been taken over by Paul Elliott. He is now the leading figure of ESI. Nima and Southall are no more. We don't know whether Florica and Mahal are still on the board. I strongly doubt it with Neiman now gone. Farnell is definitely still there. Elliot, clearly not having the financial capability to run this football club. He has no football experience, doesn't have the money. As much as he can say like, oh, we're just going to, we're going to get these nine games in. We're going to finish the season and then we'll go from there. We can't trust him. So this, so Paul Elliot, if you do end up watching this video, I hope that you can bring stability to the club like you've said that you will when you say that you're in the background you want to be in the background be less of known that all but confirms that you don't have the money so do the right thing bring andrew barkley and peter varney into our club know exactly what they're getting themselves into they truly care for this club so elliot do the right thing Get Varney and Barkley on board as your extra investment. Don't bring on some random sod from the streets in Manchester who we know nothing about and is the same as you with no money because you clearly don't have the money to take over this club. You are very clearly an extremely skint investor. So if you want to stay in the background, then stick to that. Stay in the background, stay on the board, put a little money in there when you can, whatever you can do, things like that, and bring Varney and Barkley into the club because they will be the men to take us forward. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, turn on those post notifications so you're notified of when I post. Vote for me in the Football Content Awards as the best club content creator 
in the Football League. Voting closes this Thursday. Click the link in the description, top link in the description. Scroll down to the best club content creator in the Football League. Select my name to cast your vote. What do you guys think about this whole situation? Let me know in the comments below. Championship football is finally back on June 20th. Live reactions to all of the remaining games of the championship season will be posted on the channel. This has been Tyler Robinson. Have a nice day and I'll see you all on Saturday for the live reaction against Hull City when championship football returns. Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you all later.